Hello everyone, this is our HIM 5370 presentation presented by Asma Narani, Jennifer Aranda Perez, and Bethany Voigt. And the healthcare organization we chose to review includes the University of North Carolina Healthcare System. The University of North Carolina Healthcare System, or UNC, was established in 1998 under the North Carolina General Assembly. As a healthcare institution, it is not-for-profit national integrated healthcare system that holds itself accountable for all patients cared for. This organization is headquartered in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and it focuses on utilizing information technology to better the patient experience and integrate it within the system without profiting from care or treatment, as well as other initiatives. In terms of bettering the patient experience, this company, along with its eight partnered clinical spe specialties, such as Nash Healthcare, Lenore Memorial Hospital, Codwell Memorial Hospital, Chatham Hospital, and many others. These facilities are made up of a regional health system, hospitals, as well as physician practices that assist with the patient experience integration factor. And some of the goals of this organization include safety and quality of care, patient satisfaction, dedicated services, technology development, financial viability, and quality research programs. UNC Healthcare has over 10,000 employees where its company standards aim to deliver the most beneficial and efficient care and services to all patients. The purpose of this establishment involves contributing patient care values, promoting research, and educating professionals. And with this, some of the services offered include case management teams, care coordination, advanced care planning, dietary services, wellness visits, compliant care coordination, disease management, and behavioral health services. These services are meant to assist in the care during the patient's entire health stay and even after their stay. Consequently, this organization went through a recent lawsuit in 2018 regarding an alleged violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. According to the violation, individuals whom are blind were not receiving appropriate communication, such as Braille or large print, which made it difficult for those patients to value their medical information. UNC also practices research and innovation. The plan with research involves understanding and determining how to improve diagnosing, treating, and preventing human diseases. This organization partnered with UNC Research in order to define the actual collaboration as well as pursue research volunteers to perform practice studies as well as clinical research. And just some examples of what the organization has conducted in terms of research and what it intends to conduct in the future involves heart and vascular oncology and other cancer related trials. UNC Healthcare System is ranked number three in the list of best hospitals in North Carolina by U.S. News. Of the hospitals listed, the number one healthcare system was Duke University Health System. Duke Health System would be an organization that is a competitor of UNC. Other competitors listed were University Health Systems of Eastern Carolina and High Point Regional Health. The UNC healthcare system consists of 10 hospitals across the state and the UNC School of Medicine in Chapel Hill. The organization houses over 3,000 beds. Organization's performance. A positive effect on the organization's performance would be their continued advancement in technology. UNC has developed a system called Epic at UNC which is a program used to share their patients' information across all the UNC campuses. The organization is also using mobile applications and telemedicine to provide services for certain specialties. Patient services statistics. Some statistics for a few of the major areas of UNC. 
from 2017 to 2018, the emergency room saw an increase of 3,455 visits, deliveries increased by 215, and the surgical department saw an increase of 894 procedures. A full list of the patient service statistics can be seen in the UNC annual report. Patient care reimbursement. The reimbursement of patient care services is through agreements with Medicare, Medicaid, and other insurance carriers. UNC also provides charity care to patients free of charge or at a lower rate to individuals that meet the criteria. Financial statements. A summary of the financial statements. The operating revenue increased by 302 million and operating expenses by 27 million from 2017 to 2018. Cash flows from operating activities saw a decrease of 179 million. There was also a decrease in liabilities of 393 million. Contributions. UNC Healthcare System is a nonprofit organization. The organization provided over 400,000 volunteer hours. The hours were used to provide pet therapy, a military visitation program, and providing support to mothers during the birthing process. Other forms of contributions included Habitat for Humanity, a mall walking program, and a school supply drive. There was no mention of donations made in the annual reports reviewed. Hello class, my name is Asma Nirani and I will be talking about income statement review. The net operating revenue and the net operating expenses um, increased in 2017 and 18 per company. Operating income for 2018 was 148 million, which was lower than 2017 uh, by 47 million. Non-operating income in 2018 totaled 96 million compared to 2017 when it was 73 million. Next, we will talk about ratios. Profitability ratio. Profitability ratio are a group of financial utilized to regulate the capacity of an organization to generate earnings. Liquidity ratios are the ratios which are very important part of financial matrix. Um, it's used to regulate a debtor's capacity to pay off existing debt. Uh, responsibilities without rising external capital. Current ratios are the ones, uh, it's a part of liquidity ratio that computes a business capacity to pay short-term responsibilities within one year time frame. Asset test ratios. The asset test ratios practice as a resistant balance sheet and data as a pointer of whether it is adequate short-term assets to protect its short-term accountabilities. Debt ratios calculate how much of a company operation originates from debt instead of other methods of financing. And lastly, long-term debt ratio is a proportion that signifies the financial situation of the organization and its ability to encounter all its financial necessities. Now we will talk about balance sheet review and in which we will um, point out current assets and fixed assets. Current assets basically um, reduced in 2017 um, compared to 2018 and fixed asset balance uh, at the year end was higher than 2017 balance. UNC's SWOT analysis, strengths, continued growth across the state through a partnership with another organization that could add 11 more facilities across the state. Technology advancement, continued promotion of the mobile apps and telemedicine, and innovative treatments by continuing their research. Weakness, UNC competitors are also keeping up with advanced technology. Violations. A lawsuit brought against UNC for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act for not having appropriate communication for visually impaired individuals. And cybersecurity. A break-in at one of the clinics resulted in the loss of a laptop 
that contain information on over 24,000 patients. UNC's opportunities. Continued technology advancement will allow UNC Healthcare to stay in the forefront of the ever-changing healthcare industry. Staying focused on improving security at all of their facilities will reduce the risk for future breaches, threats. Threats that it could affect UNC healthcare system is the continued technology advancement and the expansions of the other healthcare organizations. Moving on to the summary and recommendations. As a team, we comprised a strategic model for UNC Health's revenue cycle management process, which can be defined with five promising steps revolving around, one, defining the company strategy, two, determining the mission and vision of how to manage it and what is expected, three, identifying goals, four, understanding internal and external factors, and five, performing a SWOT analysis. This specified strategic analysis can allow for the company's earnings to be better protected, which then allows for better growth of revenue. In addition, this organization would be able to communicate a plan emphasizing the goals in an easy to follow format. In terms of an operation planning revenue cycle and reimbursement model, our group ensured based on UNC's last year's revenue numbers the organization performed well financially in terms of necessary increases and decreases. And with this, I was able to create a comparison chart of the balance sheet review for UNC, which as you can see, the total assets increased from 2017 to 2018, the total liabilities decreased from 2017 to 2018, and the total net position decreased from 2017 to 2018. In order to maintain the financial operations, a model representing the flow of desired revenue cycle and reimbursement management involving the processes of patient access management, coding, billing, denial management, account receivable, and follow-ups was created by our team. And as you can see, we created a flow chart with the following items. And we also emphasized each one where patient access management involves registration and scheduling. Coding involves the type of visit as well as patient diagnosis and if they had any procedures. Billing involves data entry, insurance, and credit verification. Denial management involves review of denials and claims management. And of course, account receivables and follow-up involves any account receivable services and reviewing of any follow-ups. Lastly, we have a few recommendations we came up with as a team. And one of the recommendations could be to revisit expenses and increase the charges per discharge reliant on the targeted market sector and organizations should have effective aim and objective that it should be functioning tirelessly to accomplish. Another recommendation includes improving operational performance where an organization would be able to motivate talented staff members who have a capacity to bring big improvements within the institution. The organization can always motivate employees for higher levels of performance. Another recommendation involves the leadership team needing to be very obsessive regarding the objectives of an organization. In this process, communication and trust are the pillar to a successful organization. And lastly, the importance of Constant enhancement, research, and expansion should not be underestimated. And we feel that all of these recommendations are necessary for UNC Healthcare. Thank you for viewing our presentation. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to list them below.